Hello everyone. I've got a small electronics project coming up and I needed some components which weren't available at my local electronics shop. So I went on the internet and I went to arrow.com, which is a commercial distributor of electronics and I bought from them. Now arrow is not a sponsor of this video. I just happened to find the components I needed from them and not some of the other competitors. But I wanted to show what happens when you buy a small number of components from a distributor that's set up to sell on the order of thousands to large corporations. So in this box are about 30 capacitors and two rotary encoders. Those components will pretty much fit in the palm of my hand. If I were to have bought them from an electronic shop or some other place on the internet, it's not uncommon that they would all show up in a tiny plastic bag like this, probably stuck in a padded envelope and shipped to me accordingly. However, when you make an order like that from a commercial distributor, you'll find that they take a little bit more care in getting the product to you. Let's take a look inside the box. So right off the bat, this was sent to Steve Guidi, which is me, uh, the receiving department, which is my front door. It doubles as my shipping and receiving department, so nice of them to put that there. Uh, shipping manifest is here, all expected stuff. And inside, we get into the goods. So there's a bunch of paper, which we can get out of the way. There's a bunch of tiny packages. There's a bunch of stuff that's all in these melamine anti-static packages. Some of these non-static packages. I wonder why they, they chose to put those in those types of packaging instead of the anti-static, because they're all capacitors. They're all pretty much the same thing. These must be the rotary encoders. So let's, uh, let's go through this in a moment. Put that down there. There's a, a bunch of paperwork here. This is about maybe 20 or so sheets. We'll go through that. Put that down here. And we've got some more paper, which will be used to protect the goods inside. So let's get rid of this box and go through all these materials. All right, so I've tidied this up a little bit and I've got rid of the box and the packaging paper that was cluttering everywhere. So we can take a look at what all these things are. So the first thing I want to show are these papers. And there's about one sheet of paper, maybe per unique component that I have. And there's about maybe 20 unique components or something on that order. And basically what each of these papers are is a certification that they actually sent me the part and quantity that I asked for. The description in here basically gives a little bit of information about the part number. In this case, it's um, uh, looks like an electrolytic capacitor, uh, 50 volt, one microfarad, and some temperature and current specifications and mean time to failure. So pretty detailed information, really nice. Um, and we can go on. The interesting thing that I noticed on here is that for these rotary encoders, there is an export restriction on them. So it looks like I'm not allowed to export those rotary encoders outside of the United States without prior authorization from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Are they really going to care if I send those things to Canada or Mexico? I don't know. Really strange. But on a global scale, on a company and corporate level, I would imagine that this could potentially be important depending on the products that are being built. And this goes on and on for about another 10 or so pages. We don't have to get into that. Let's uh, take a look at the components now. I'll move this stuff out of the way. Okay, so each of these bags has a tiny little film capacitor in it. In some cases, we have an electrolytic like uh, this guy over here. But it's amazing that it's usually just one component per package. I think one of these has an ammo strip. Yeah, there we go. So this one has, uh, let's see if I can get it out of the glare. This one has about 12 film capacitors all in one bag. That's nice that they did that. So I know that all 12 of the things in here are exactly the same in terms of their electrical characteristics. So they're not mixing these guys up with electrolytics or even more confusingly, other film capacitors that have tiny markings on them that would be hard to discern. So it's really nice that they do that. They put a label on the front so you know exactly what part is in the bag and exactly how many there are and the part number is there and you can cross-reference this against your bill of materials for the project that you're working on and figure out where everything is. 
So one thing that was kind of interesting, I think this is the bag. Uh, some of these bags have smaller bags in them. I've never seen that before. Uh, not this one. Well, which, which one was it? This guy here. So you might not be able to see that, but there is a smaller electrostatic bag on the inside. And I'm kind of curious what that is. So let's open this thing up. And these melamine bags are huge for the components that are inside. Remember, all this stuff can fit in the palm of my hand. All right, so here's a tinier melamine bag, and it has, okay, another film capacitor. Look at that. It's right there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up because of the glare, but it's, well, let's just open this thing up. It's a bag inside of a bag, inside of a bigger box. Matryoshka. So yeah, that's what we're expecting to see inside roughly 30 of those things cool put this out of the way and finally let's take a look at this exemplary packaging so in here are two rotary encoders and rotary encoders are basically mechanical devices that are kind of like potentiometers or variable resistors they have a little knob on them that you can rotate and they give a signal to the device that is reading them so this thing is incredibly packaged. Look at that. So in here, there's a plastic box that's wrapped in bubble wrap. Like there's no way I would get something this sophisticated from my local electronic shop or any kit I would buy on, on the internet that would have these components. It would all come in one of these tiny little bags like this and you're on your own once you get it. Look at that. And now there's another little thing inside. So, oh, look at this. They put it inside of a plastic container that is molded for each of the encoders so that you could practically throw this off the back of a truck and someone could step on it or run over it. And when they find the package on the road, they could re-deliver and say, Mr. Guidi, here are your rotary encoders. We had a little incident, but we're pretty sure they still work. This is amazing. Well done, Arrow. Now, I don't know if other distributors do the same thing, but if you know that they do, like DigiKey and Mouser, and what's the one in China, LCSC or LSCS, if they do that too, awesome. That's amazing. These are the uh, little nuts that secure the rotary encoder to whatever you mount it to. So awesome that they included that as well, because if you don't have these, and this is kind of useless when you put these things in a box, it just there's no way to fix it. All right, let's move some of this out of the way. One more thing I want to show on this papers that came in the, in the packaging, and specifically what's written on the back of these papers, because that's interesting as well. So there are basically three sections here that are of interest. Let me try and zoom in to see if we can get a closer look at this. All right, so on the back of this paper, and in fact, all the papers that came with this package, there's some interesting information about the guarantees that the distributor is making about the stuff that they sent me. So there's three paragraphs here. The first one basically says that all the products assembled by us, which are shipped, blah, 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 blah. They basically meet the specifications that I requested. So if I ask for a one kilo ohm resistor uh, with 5% tolerance, I'm getting exactly that. I'm not getting a one kilo ohm resistor of 10% tolerance or 1% tolerance. It's been checked and it's been confirmed that it is exactly what I wanted. And that's very important because if they send parts that are out of spec, then you will not know until the products are probably in the field. If you're making large you know, amounts of things, if there's going to be a problem with them. And in fact, I do remember a video by Dave Jones of the EEV blog. Uh, he made some contraption that had some resistors that were out of spec from what he actually ordered. So I think he was getting something like a 1% tolerance resistor, but in fact, the distributor sent them 5% tolerance resistors. So for that 4% discrepancy, he found that some of his circuit boards were not behaving as expected. And they were only detected until those boards were manufactured and ready to go to the field. So that could probably lead to some very expensive quality assurance and rectification issues if they don't certify that the components you get are exactly what you asked for. Now, the second paragraph here deals with military specifications. 
I'm not building rockets or guidance systems or anything to that effect, so this doesn't really apply to me. But basically what it says is that if you get a part that has certain military specifications and military standards, you're getting exactly that. Uh, and then finally, there's a statement here that says that the parts that I purchased are basically uh, genuine and they come from the manufacturer that I requested. They've, they've been checked to make sure. So uh, let's see, what's a good example here? So like this guy, this is a uh, Viché uh, film capacitor. This is not a counterfeit film capacitor by guarantee of Aero Electronics. This part actually came from Viché. And I have some mechanical, or sorry, rotary encoders that are from Borns. Those are Borns rotary encoders. They're not some knockoff that they bought on eBay because they didn't have the part in stock. I can be assured of that. And it's signed by the VP of the global supply chain at Aero Electronics, Mr. David Collier, or Collier. I'm sorry, sir, if I mispronounced your name. It's kind of hard to gauge uh, when we don't meet in person. But this is great that they have these types of certifications. So I made a similar order of some stuff like this a few years ago, and I got a large box, and it had just three MOSFETs in it. And if you're not familiar with a MOSFET, it's basically a tiny chip, um, maybe just a little bit smaller than the packaging for this film capacitor. And I got three of them, and it was in a box that was about you know, 12 inches by 12 inches by, you know, three inches. It was freaking crazy. I was so surprised. I posted it on Facebook and, you know, I got all the laughs and the likes and someone made a comment that said it went along the lines that that was very wasteful for the environment, all that packaging material. And when I got this stuff, I was thinking about that comment and I was asking myself, why would a company go through all of this, like all this mess of bags and papers and wrapping and packaging materials to deliver stuff that could be put in your palm of your hand when most other suppliers or little electronic shops that you go to do the very same thing. They put it all in a tiny little bag and they give it to you and away you go. And the reason for all of this complexity basically has to do with the customers that Arrow and DigiKeys and all those other guys cater to and the quantity that they cater to as well. I'm buying 30 things. I'm not buying thousands of components and making hundreds of thousands of computers or whatever and shipping them out all across the country. I'm building a tiny little joystick controller, which I'll demonstrate in another video. So I really don't care about all this, but if you were the Apple computer company or the Commodore computer company or whatever, and you got a bag with a bunch of stuff in it and you had to use that bag to build, you know, hundreds of computers and these labels, weren't on the bag or they weren't electrostatically protected and one of your components failed uh, during transit, you'd be pretty pissed off. So Arrow is doing the right thing here. They're protecting themselves from any type of failure that could happen from when the component arrives at their warehouse to when it gets to you. So yes, it's kind of wasteful that we have all these packaging materials here. But at the same time, it's also bad for business if we don't take precautions to protect sensitive components in transit. So that will wrap things up for today. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope this video gives you some insight into how and why commercial component distributors ship their products. Please feel free to add your comments to the discussion below and to use the like and dislike buttons at your leisure. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and I hope to see you back soon.